Hello and welcome to the latest video of Bikta Sensei no Jogyo. Today I want to focus on bingo related activities. This is something that I personally use a lot because it's highly adaptable to different lessons. The first thing that I recommend doing is to create a bingo template sheet. For instance, right here, I just have different bingo sheets, six of them per page. And then it's really easy because you could just cut them into individual sizes and stuff. So it's easy to pass out to different kids. The best bingo template I would recommend using is a 4x4 bingo box. I think a 4x4 box is the perfect size to use during your lessons. 3x3 three three are just too small and too short. 5x5s five five are just too long and too intricate. Using a 4x4 four four is the best one. The game lasts a good decent amount and if you have time you could do it again. So right now I want to break down different ways that you could use bingo related activities. If you have a blank template, I know with my first and second grade students I do color lessons. An activity that I do is I give each kid one sheet of paper and I tell them to pick their favorite color. Just one. So each kid will have a paper and their color. Let's say the expression of the lesson is what color do you like? I like you have the kids that are usually sat in pairs anyway, talk to each other and communicate. So one kid will say, what color do you like? And then that kid will respond, I like orange. What color do you like? I like green. And then you have the kids change colors and then color in the box. The other kid will do the same thing and color in the box. They always keep their paper, but they return the color afterwards. So with this lesson, I really like doing it this way because it's easy to control. You have the kids do the communication together, color, and then you do a countdown, five, four, three, two, one, and let them know that it's time to change. And then usually you just have one row that just moves while the other kid stays there. And then you just have them do the new communication with the new pairs. So towards the end, the kids have filled out their sheets completely with different colors. And once they have different colors, you could play bingo. And it's really easy. You just do bingo the regular way, just randomly pick different colors like orange. And if the kid has it, they are able to mark it with a pencil, not a color, because you use colors obviously, so you're the pencil you can mark it. So that's easy, one bingo activity with colors. Another easy way to use blank templates is to have the kids write the vocabulary inside. So it could be any single lesson really, and this way they practice their vocabulary. You just have them write the vocabulary or draw pictures to represent the vocabulary. For instance, if we're doing weather, you could just do sunny, cloudy, stormy, snowy, rainy, different symbols to represent the weathers. After the kids have drawn or written the vocabulary word, you just play bingo with the vocabulary words and that way the kids practice the vocabulary. Another easy activity is numbers. You just specify a group of numbers the kids can use, for instance 1 through 20, and have them kids fill out 1 through 20 randomly. And then you just play bingo with the numbers. This is really easy just blank templates and the students can write down the given information wherever they want and they create their own bingo sheets so then you can play bingo. The one thing I want to emphasize though is make sure you have time because with students they always take forever to write. I don't know why but sometimes the kids are perfectionists and they constantly erasing, constantly rewriting, constantly erasing, constantly rewriting and it always takes forever. So make sure you're constantly encouraging kids to hurry up, hurry up, hurry up and even include time limits that way the kids know they have to fill it out quickly. Another way I use bingo related activities is with interviews. If you want to use a bingo sheet in an interview format, I would recommend numbering the spaces randomly. So the way I have a number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So each space is numbered randomly. A good time to use the numbered interview template is for lessons when you require yes I do or no I don't responses. Because it's really easy. If they answer yes I do, you just draw a circle. And if they respond, no, I don't, you just draw an X. So you have, yes, I do, circles, no, I don't, X. So here's a demonstration. For instance, let's say the lesson expression is, do you like sports name? Yes, I do, no, I don't. So the kids walk around with their bingo templates and a writing utensil. So in pairs, each kid will start off with the box numbered one. The kids will ask each other a question, for instance, do you like soccer? Then the other student has to respond. Yes, I do, or no, I don't. If they say yes, I do, you do a circle. And if they say no, I don't, they do an X. Then the other kid interviews. Do you like tennis? No, I don't. So they write inside the number one spot. So just make sure you emphasize that the kids have to write in their answers in the numbered format. So make sure they follow the numbers. So by the time the activity is done, the kids should have filled out their whole sheet with X's and O's. So what you do afterwards is you could ask who has the most number of a specific bingo. So you could ask who has the most circle bingos 
who has the most X bingos. And then you just reward the kid that wins. Or you could also just say who has the most bingos in general. So it's pretty easy. The kids aren't putting circles and X's wherever they want because then they can easily get a bingo. It's more controlled because they have to follow the numbers on the actual bingo template. If you're constrained for time or if you want a more organized interview method, what I also do sometimes is have the kid John Ken. So they can say rock, scissors, paper, one, two, three. And the winner only gets to ask and fill out their paper. So the winner was asked the losing student, do you like soccer? And then the losing student will respond, yes I do, no I don't. And then the winner only gets to fill out the sheet and then go to another person. So this is if you're more time constrained and you just want to do something really fast. Not everybody's likely to have a bingo. This one's more like some kids are going to have bingo, some kids are not. The good thing with the interview number template is that it doesn't only work with yes and no answers. You can also level it up for your fifth and sixth grade students and actually do various types of interviews. With the sixth graders, I know that there's a lesson where you talk about countries and where they want to go. So once again, you'll give each student a bingo template sheet and have them hold the writing utensil. They will go around the classroom asking different kids where they want to go. Once they answer, I want to go to America, they would write America into the space. And they obviously go in order of the numbers again, so you don't have kids just going America, America, America and getting bingo right away. So at the end, you could just ask the students who has any bingo with the country names. For example, if they have America, 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 it'll be bingo. If they have Italy, 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 in any line format, they would get bingo. In case nobody gets bingos, you could just pick a random country, like let's say Spain. Whichever kid has the most of that randomly picked country wins. So bingo is something I use in my classes all the time because I could adapt it in various different ways. So I encourage you to use bingo whenever you can. Just make sure you don't have back-to-back -back classes of bingo. I'll try to space it out a little bit. That's it for this video. Just different ways you could use bingo related activities. And if you're interested in future videos, please hit that subscribe button. Also, I have a Facebook group, so please join my Facebook group and that way you can keep in contact with me more easily. You could give me feedback, you could talk to me, ask me questions, ask for advice, or you could just give me suggestions for future videos that you want me to film. Goodbye, see you, and have a nice day. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in a future video. Bye.